Nobody wants to see their child um, in a situation like that. A Texas middle school teacher was put behind bars on allegations she repeatedly had sex with one of her students, a 13-year-old. On December 20th, police arrested 27-year-old Adriana Ruyan in Laredo, Texas, on charges of sexual abuse of a child, improper relationship between educator and student, and indecency with the child. But personally speaking, I've never seen um, this explicit of a relationship on paper described between a, a child and an adult. Law and Crime spoke with KGNS news anchor and investigative reporter Brenda Camacho, whose station first broke the story. She says the arrest affidavit alleges shocking details, including Ruyan had sexual intercourse and sexual contact with the boy on a dozen occasions, even during school hours. The text messages that were shown were from August to November, which is kind of when the case started to unfold. Um, just very detailed content that we were ourselves, our news organization didn't feel comfortable airing to the public just from how detailed and explicit they were. According to the UISD website, Ruyan was a teacher as well as seventh grade basketball and track coach at Antonio Gonzalez Middle School, which is a part of the United Independent School District known as UISD, the largest school district in Laredo. The school district reportedly was very tight-lipped on the investigation, never naming Ruyan as the teacher involved in the crime. They sent a press release out to the media, basically referring to a case in which an employee of theirs was arrested. In that statement, they explained that they had done an investigation, that their police department performed the investigation, and that the employee was let go over the course of them looking into it. So we kind of just went based off of that. We um, reached out to the district to ask for the name of the employee because we had not received any police reports thus far mentioning any sort of district employee being arrested. So the district told us since it involved a minor, they could not release any further details aside from the statement that was published. And so we had to do a little bit of digging ourselves. The case came to light on November 27th when a UISD criminal investigator responded to the middle school after the 13-year-old boy's parents reported the allegation. The parents reportedly stated to investigators they became suspicious when the boy spent more than $130 at a local academy sporting goods store. It was the parents of that teenager who kind of spearheaded this whole, this whole case. Um, they said that at the beginning of November of this year, they started noticing that the teen had a lot of money, disposable income um, to purchase things during a shopping spree. They asked him where he got that money into which he said he got it from, quote, good friends. And in the, I believe, days following that, um, the stepfather of the teen finally obtained his phone and went through Cash App. I believe that was the app where they saw the transactions and they noticed a name, Adriana Ruyan. Camacho explains, according to the affidavit, a deeper dive into the teen's phone revealed inappropriate text messages stored under the name Adriana with pink heart emojis. Obviously, sexual content. There was also mentions of pregnancy. Um, Ms. Ruyan in those messages allegedly points to the fact that she could have been pregnant on multiple occasions even stating at one point, quote, this is from the affidavit, that it is difficult to get pregnant sometimes. So it, it could be assumed that it was a very sexual relationship at times, based off of the way it was explained, it seemed like they were having this sexual relationship on campus during school hours um, in between classes, it seemed like. Um, and According to the arrest affidavit, there was a mention of, well, there was a lot of evidence collected, of course, the, the teen's phone, as well as handwritten letters that were from allegedly Ms. Hurian to the teen. That is what is alleged in those letters. And there was also a mention of a nine month relationship in that specific letter and the want to get pregnant. According to the text messages, though, or according to the arrest affidavit, they assume that the relationship began in May, but it's possible it could have been longer. 
Um, but what we do know is that in November, it is when it ended due to the, the stemming of this investigation. The discovery of the text messages by his family even prompted the young teen to run away from his home. His stepfather reportedly contacted the number on his phone listed as Adriana. And at some point during their conversation, she admitted to being the boy's teacher and even requested to go to their home to help assist his parents in finding the boy, who was eventually found physically safe. Still during that time, Ms. Horian continued to call and call and call, wanting to stop by the house and explain herself. Consistently kept saying that she was admitting to doing wrong, but it was mentioned in there that she admitted to the father that there was no sexual relationship, according to um, the affidavit. When the allegations were made public, it's been reported that the teen became emotionally distraught and devastated. He since received professional medical care to cope with this overwhelming situation. He did express um, the need to or the want to hurt himself um, because of his expression of self-infliction or wanting to impose self-infliction. Um, he was taken to the hospital, and from that point on, it was mentioned that he was um, taken to a mental facility, a mental health facility. Police say Ruyan continued to make calls to the teen's phone to request to go to their home and attempts to explain herself, but the teen's parents decided to file a criminal complaint. On November 28th, Ruyan called investigators to meet in person, but she denied that her relationship with the boy was sexual, despite text messages and photos over the course of two months allegedly proving otherwise. Um, during the police interview with United ISD, she explained that she was in the wrong but that she has a tendency of wanting to help others. And when asked if it was sexual, she denied that to the officer. Um, but she did say that she was let go and she understood that the reason was because of the situation. In a recorded conversation with the teen's parents, Rihanna admitted she had done something wrong, stating to them, I know I messed up. I'm an adult and should have known better. And aside from her saying that she knows she's done wrong, she also said that she's seen instances like this happen and she never thought it would happen to her. Over the course of this year alone, law and crime has reported on more than a dozen cases involving teachers having sexual relationships with their young students. In Tennessee, former fourth grade teacher Alyssa McCommon was arrested twice, accused of having sex with a now 15-year-old. She's reportedly pregnant with his child. McCommon is charged with rape of a child and illegal contact with a victim. In Las Vegas, former teacher Caitlin Glover was arrested for lewdness with the child after she allegedly engaged in a sexual relationship with the student for four years. The victim told police Glover would send them explicit messages and perform sex acts. And in Missouri, a teacher who used to be a special education teacher is a accused of sending a 16-year-old student nude photos of herself on Snapchat. The victim told police Ricky Lynn Laughlin also tried to pressure him into having sex. All suspects here say they're not guilty. But is this a common problem in Laredo, Texas? Camacho explains not necessarily. I can't say that as far as cases that are, are out in the public eye, you don't see these cases as often here in town. I, I honestly can't even remember the last time we had um, a case like this, this much in the spotlight anytime soon, probably more than a year ago, if I could, if I could pinpoint a time. First, I wouldn't say that these types of cases are frequent, um, but it's also safe to say that it's possible that these aren't as frequently reported. It's my understanding that, um, you know, word was starting to spread amongst um, the school that this was, was happening. So, um, while these cases are very rare, you know, reporting wise, you never know uh, what is actually happening. Rian was eventually arrested by the United ISD Police Department, but she later bailed out after a $175,000 bond was posted on her behalf. On the same day of Rian's arrest, the school district where she worked released a statement seemingly in reference to her arrest, although they don't identify her in the statement. UISD said the former employee was placed on leave once they were made aware of the allegations and that the employee no longer works for the district. As for the boy involved in the case at this time, it's unclear if the teen is back in school or still seeking mental health treatment. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.